Thank you very much indeed. Uh, dear Mr. Prime Minister, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to bid welcome in Kyiv, uh, in our capital, to our friend, a friend of the entire Ukraine and uh, the friend of freedom, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister. This is your second visit, Boris, to Kyiv after the uh, after 24th of February, the beginning of the full-scale invasion by the Russian Federation to our soil. And I am grateful to you for this attention to our country, uh, to all our people, to our country, and to your leadership and uh, the unparalleled support by the United Kingdom to Ukraine. Our negotiations today, uh, I have to say that, as usual, they have been very substantial and full with important details. We touched upon the key issues on the bilateral agenda, as well as the, uh, the general situation in Europe and worldwide. First of all, that is uh, about uh, two important things, uh, namely defense and security. We discuss the current situation on the front line in the east and the south of our country at length. We discussed our opportunities uh, in defending Ukraine uh, against the Russian occupier. We, we have common position on how to move towards our victory because that is the result Ukraine needs, victory for our country. I appreciate your understanding of our military requirements. That is very important, particularly we discuss the needs to bolster the supplies of heavy weaponry. Um, we need to uh, ensure our needs in terms of air defense systems. We started moving in that direction. Russian rockets remain a peril to uh, all of our people and the entire territory of Ukraine. The overwhelming majority of Russian missile strikes are targeted by Russian troops against civilians and civilian infrastructure. They hit residential buildings, schools, hospitals, transport and enterprises. Obviously, that must be one of the paramount tasks to deal with but for our partners and for us. Uh, we need to help uh, us uh, defend ourselves for, uh, from the Russian rockets that will be a key to guaranteeing the normal lives for our people in our territory. We also touched upon the conclusions of the third meeting in Rammstein base, and I appreciate Britain's effort in promoting our interest. We discussed uh, Ukraine's needs in uh, economic support, that is about finance, uh, because we are also facing the shortage of fuel uh, because of the bombardment of our storage facilities and new uh, oil processing plants. We also discussed uh, the difficult issue uh, of uh, um, ensuring our needs for the heating season, and I thank Boris for his uh, uh, commitment to help our country in this regard. Uh, we also discussed uh, further ways on how to step up sanctions against the Russian Federation. I thank uh, Boris for his leadership and principled stance in this regard. We also put forward our proposals and groundwork. We can make sanctions uh, uh, very, very tangible in order to, to make sure that Russia feels uh, the consequences of, his, of its terrorist acts against Ukraine and international stability. Uh, uh, the aggressor must pay a price for this aggression, for this war, the steepest price. Russia should also compensate all the uh, all the damage that it has caused to Ukraine and our businesses and our communities. Russia should also be held to account for the um, uh, food security crisis that it has precipitated. Russia is squarely responsible for the uh, deficit of food and the global market in uh, the end uh, blocking the eruption of our ports. Uh, Africa and Asia should be protected from famine, and as well as all peoples around the world, they should have all the essentials and basic products. Uh, if it had not been for the Russian aggression, we would not have had this, this deficit. We also uh, took our work further in terms of Ukraine's security guarantees to ensure Ukraine's stability and European stability and stability worldwide. We should also uh, intensify our cooperation in terms of demining Ukrainian territory. We also started discussing this direction as well. Uh, we also uh, discussed political matches uh, uh, in terms of Ukraine's reconstruction. We do not have any doubt that Ukraine is going to prevail, so we are preparing uh, for post-war reconstruction. Our, after our victory, I thank you for this uh, 
I thank you for your help in terms of reconstruction of Kyiv Oblast that uh, the United Kingdom has undertaken. Uh, I thank you for the fact that these negotiations are, uh, as usual, very frank and very substantial. And taking this opportunity, I'd like also to draw your attention to uh, the fact that we have a, a historic moment today as Ukraine has received, received a positive assessment from the European Commission in terms of our membership prospect. Uh, I think that this is a fundamental step for for the entire Ukrainian people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie and uh, Volodymyr. Thank you uh, for having me once. It's great to be back here again in, in Kyiv and uh, to, see, to see you, but to also to see how life is coming back to the streets, to the cafes, to the restaurants. It's much livelier, I think, than it was just a few weeks ago when you and I went on our impromptu uh, walkabout. Uh, Vladimir, and that's a very positive thing. It's good to see visitors, uh, let me put it this way, from other European countries coming uh, to, uh, to, to, to Kiev. But we've got to face the fact that only a couple of hours away, uh, a barbaric assault continues on entirely innocent people. Towns and villages are being reduced to rubble. And as you rightly say, Vladimir, we continue to see the deliberate targeting of civilians, what is unquestionably a war crime, and in a hideous echo of the past, the illegal deportation of people that the uh, Russian forces believe are insufficiently sympathetic to Putin's aggression. And in these circumstances, we can only once again, salute the heroism of the Ukrainian forces, the bravery of your, of your armed forces. And in these circumstances, Volodymyr, I completely understand why you and your people can make no compromise with Putin. Because if Ukraine is suffering, if the Ukrainian troops are suffering, then I have to tell you that all the evidence is that Putin's troops are under acute pressure themselves and they are taking heavy casualties. Their expenditure of munitions, of, uh, of shells and other weaponry is colossal. And after our 114 days of attack on Ukraine, they have still not achieved the objectives they set out for the first week. So, Volodymyr, we're here once again to underline that we are with you to give you the strategic endurance that you will need. And we are going to continue to help intensify the sanctions on Putin's regime. We're going to do everything we can to continue to strengthen the diplomatic coalition of support around the world uh, for Ukraine. And I completely understand and sympathize with the need for continued financial support for Ukraine. We're going to work together to liberate the, uh, the grain, as you rightly say, that is being held hostage right now uh, by, by Putin, depriving people around the world of the, the food that they need. And of course, we will continue, as we have from the beginning, to provide the military equipment that you need, and now, of course, the training that may be necessary to go with that, uh, with that new equipment, so that you, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian armed forces, uh, will be able to do what I believe Ukrainians yearn to do, and that is to expel the aggressor from Ukraine. And that will be the moment for talks about the future. And it will be in that context of a free Ukraine that we and other countries will be making the security commitments and guarantees that we've discussed uh, so often. And we will work together with you and with our partners to rebuild your wonderful country for the benefit of Ukrainians and, I might say, for the benefit of the whole of the global economy. Thank you for having me 
again to to Keen. Thank always, you. always wonderful uh, to be here. And uh, Slava Ukraine. Hero Slava. Thanks.